Welcome back, everybody. Let's get that shut off. All right. I think today is the 8th, January 8th. I'm sitting in my shed. Tent shed. Got the old blue bike sitting right there. And let's see how we uh, we fire this that bad boy up. Turn the key on. Cycle the fuel pump. Hit the mode button. And hit the start button. Oh! That was weird. That uh, it seemed to crank over slow too. The other battery I just changed last year, and this thing lives on the maintainer. It sits right there. Okay, break off in reverse. Yep, and this is what I gotta do every time I get a Sabo out. Okay. Oh. See you down the road, everybody. All right, I think we are recording. So welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Um, <laughs> so I just started this thing at the house and it kicked that VVS light. Vehicle stability system. It could be anywhere from a power steering something to an anti-lock brake something. But, um, you know, to be honest with you, I think it's something even simpler. So as I was cranking it over, it cranked over crazy slow. And normally what I do with my Can-Am Spiders through the winter months, I do ride them. I just rode this thing not too long ago, um, within a week or two. So I will one week have the maintainer on and then leave it off for a week or two. And what that does, it just doesn't hold that battery at a... A constant voltage it doesn't float the battery it'll let that battery kind of degrade a little bit and degrade is not the right word um, it will let that battery kind of go through a voltage cycle to where it's just not maintaining you always have a little bit of parasitic load on a battery which can drop the battery voltage how much is it going to drop it in a week or two who knows but that's what I do since I just have a $10 maintainer you know one week or two on the maintainer um, a couple weeks off of the maintainer and look at all that equipment on the back of that there Dodge Ram um, so I think what's going on with this this was a leftover Can-Am Spider and I'm not gonna freak out oh my goodness oh I've only had this thing what just over a year um, <laughs> it, it kicked a code and it's piece of crap and it's broken the first thing I'm going to do is, as we noticed when I was crank, let's start there. As we were cranking this over, I was cranking this over. That code popped up. So when you turn your key and you hit the start button, it's called cranking voltage. That battery is going to take the heaviest load it is going to have throughout the operation of this vehicle. So if that cranking voltage drops below a certain voltage, and I don't know what that certain voltage is, I am not a BRP technician. I am just the technician that worked on cars for 25 years. If that voltage drops below a certain voltage, your computer might be like, I don't have enough voltage to support this operation, and it can kick code. I've seen it all the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is when I get back, I'm going to throw this thing back on the maintainer and I'm going to go in the house and I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, the next warm day, because it's not that warm, I'm out here in my heated gear and it is turned up and I am nice and toasty, but to work on the spider, it needs to be a little bit warmer. First thing I'm going to do is with this thing being on the maintainer, if it takes a week for me to get back out to this thing, that battery will be fully charged. 
I will disconnect the battery. I will take some memory cloth or anything you have, sandpaper, you know, anything you have to clean the battery terminal. And then I will clean the cables. And then as I put this back together, I only, well, I have two, but one's gonna go away. So I'm only gonna have one set of leads that are an accessory lead going down to that battery and it's my 12 volt plug right here at the bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the battery terminal itself is clean. I'm gonna make sure that the cables on both sides are clean, not just one side. And then when I put this back together, I'm gonna make sure the Can-Am Spider's battery cables are the first thing connected to the battery. So those cables to the Spider are the first thing that are on that battery. And then the second thing that will be on the battery will be the leads to my 12 volt power source. I'm gonna tighten everything up, make sure I have a tight connection, and we're gonna go from there. Now, if it happens again, then what you would do is you would definitely pull that battery out and you would have to take a Medtronics and test the battery. You could do a, a voltage load test on this thing to where you would crank the, you know, and you would, and this is like old school. If I can remember right, it's been forever. So the old ones would just put a, a heavy load on the battery. Uh, you would make sure it didn't drop below a certain voltage, 10.5, something like that. You put that load on there for 30 seconds. And that's fine and dandy, but it is not the best way to test a battery. Uh, the best way to test a battery is through a Medtronics. Yeah, we use these all the time in the shop. And what a Medtronics did is it sent a signal through that battery. And as it analyzed that signal, not only did it tell you your cranking amps, it tells you the state of health of your battery. So your battery could have 12.5, 12.8 volts, fully charged battery. It looks great, but the health of the battery could be insufficient. And then when you get into a, the battery's a little low, I'm cranking it, the battery voltage then drops because the lower, if I remember right, the lower the voltage you have, that starter motor, the amperage is gonna go up and it's gonna require even more from that battery. So, see, it all makes sense in my head. And I'm not gonna worry about it. I am not gonna worry about it. I'm, like I said, I mean, I didn't jump on the other spider. And I don't like taking a battery that may be low in charge and making the spider charge it up or any vehicle. But this does have an alternator on it, not a stator. So it's not, should not overheat the alternator. Stator, you would probably take it out if you did that you know, more than once. Um, I've noticed this a couple times with this spider. Not that bad though, that was bad. So, you know, it's something I need to really keep an eye on. And if I feel it's a bad battery, I'm just gonna put another battery in it. I'll get the factory battery. This was a leftover spider. Um, so when I went in and looked at it, I don't know where the battery was. I don't know if it was in it. It could have been. I, I don't know. I don't know how they store them at ride one. Uh, but I do know that when I picked it up, the uh, front plastic storage tray bin, it didn't have the push pins in it. The push pins were sitting in the bottom and I grabbed my salesperson and was like, fix it. You know, so did they charge the battery before they give it to me? Did that battery, was that, da that battery damaged? It could have been, you know, I, I don't know, and I, I don't care. You know, battery is fairly cheap. Like I said, uh, the one in the Black Spider, uh, I changed it a year ago, a year and a half ago, just because of the age. That's that's the only reason I changed that that battery. So I'm not, I'm not concerned, you know. Those are the steps that you can take when you're trying to diagnose an issue. And I'm gonna say more than likely, I just have a battery that was not properly maintained at the dealer. Um, you know, with this thing being a leftover 2020, who knows when that battery had the, and I'm assuming, yet again, assuming that the factory battery would have come loaded with acid. I don't know, I've never, I'm assuming it would. Um, you know, and the battery that I will get will be the kind that you add the acid. It's still gonna be a Uwasa. Um, but it will be the kind that you, you know, you take the battery, 
you pull the little top cap off of it, you plug in the, the acid, you walk away, you let it do its thing. Once it's all in there, you cap it up, you let it sit. If you gotta charge it, you charge it, and then away you go. You know, it's super easy. The batteries on this thing are so easy. So much better than my RS I had. Oh my goodness, it was in the tail section. Oh, that sun's gonna be in everybody's eyeballs. I got the 360 cam up behind me, but uh, I mean, I don't know. Is it worth me stopping, pulling over, raising it up in the air and hitting record over just a country road behind a Jeep? <laughs> this road, this road, one of these days. Look at this, it kind of looks like you go straight there for a second and it turns gravelly and then you gotta turn. I'm gonna go straight one of these days, not paying attention, looking at the pretty countryside. So that's the tech top of the day on my Can Am Spider. It's a 2020. I got 17,446 miles on it. Um, I bought it in 2021, I think August, September. I don't know, one of those months. So I ride this thing. It does not sit. It does not sit to where that battery should be drained in any way whatsoever. So I am just going to assume that I just have a bad battery. And it happens. It happens. Just remember, if you build it, they'll come. Now, that's really pretty. That is gorgeous out through there. Downshift this bad boy. Love it. Love the farmland. So I think I'm done. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my ride. Like I said, I got the heated gear on. Uh, Spider's telling me it's 43. It's probably picking up a degree or two. The high today was only supposed to be 40, 41. Um, but I got the heated gear on. I am nice and toasty. I'm going to listen to some tunes and hopefully get away from this Jeep. Oh, I like this part. This part's really pretty too. Oh, don't hit your brakes. It's not that twisty, curly. It's just a road. They're going to make me hit my brakes, aren't they? Boom. I like downshifting. That way, when I come off a corner, I just feel like I have a little bit more control. Being in that lower gear, even though I don't need the RPM, this thing has plenty of torque. I do like to downshift. I just, I like, I don't know. You know. I'm ready to race car off that corner. So on that, I'm going to let everybody go. And of course, you know, if there is something wrong with the spider, I'll let everybody know. I just don't think there is. I think it's just a bad battery, if anything at all. So uh, on that, oh, the wife shopping. I just got an email from the Walmart. I'm going to let everybody go. <laughs> so on that, give me a big old thumbs up. I can hardly thumbs up in my glove. Eee, big old thumbs up. Stay safe, everybody. See you down the road.